And we are right back at it. As I said before the break, I hope you guys grabbed your coats because for game number two, we're going to be jumping over to Icebox. My name, Tanner Metro. Joining me once more and still is Kieran Ito Price. And now that first map, I don't want to say it was kind of a whooping, but it felt like kind of a whooping. I think what Anbox was able to show is that even when they are staring at adversity, even when they're down 11 to 1, they're not giving up. Now we jump over to uh, Icebox here as we've got this. I, I wonder what these replays are going to be because at first I felt like it was a Sentinel's highlight reel. But then that second half, as I said, things just started to heat up for Anbox. Yeah, I mean, you have to really give a lot of respect where respect is due to Anbox for that streak that they put together in the latter half of the game because they had some brilliant setups, brilliant, you know, uh, contact plays, really. But mm -hmm. honestly, I just think that Sentinels had control of so many different aspects of this game. They were fragging out way harder for starters, but also some of their mid-round calls were absolutely gorgeous. I think we have a highlight of it a little bit later on, but that 3v2, I'm still going to look back on. I, I need to make like a video analyze that sort of thing because <laughs> there's so much that went in to that play where they, they faked a, a B main plant. That way they could play close to the spike. It really just did a number. And in the end, that experience really paid off and Sentinels were able to snag it away, although Ambox gave them a good run for their money for at least a little while. It was a good run-in, and now that we're kind of talking about that that last play specifically, in these replays, it was 11-2 to two in rounds, and you kind of saw how Sentinels want to play on B-site when they're down to two members. It was both of them stacked up into the back of the site, so had somebody had that cognitive thought, although the spike being planted for B-Main kind of throws a wrench into things, I think it could have gone another way should somebody have been expecting them to be in the back mm -hmm. of the side, especially. And here it is right here. So, it, I mean, it almost yeah. feels like an exact replay of what happened earlier uh, in the pistol rounds. And Dapper, just to close things out, I had just something. I had something for a boy here at the end. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to give it to me. So we'll have to see if we get that on Icebox. But Sentinels looked incredibly strong now we get to see icebox as a map that again i don't think a whole lot of teams are feeling incredibly comfortable on there's still so much to to learn especially with new agents coming out every couple of months and both of these teams only having a few games played on it with pretty good win rates single digits for the two of them yeah but as you said amazing win rate for the both of them and um, looking at my stats right now 75 percent win rate for uh Ambox, excuse me, and then it's a 67% win rate out of nine maps for Sentinels. So I can throw all these numbers at you, but at the end of the day, you have to keep in mind, Sentinels chose this map. They're the ones who feel incredibly comfortable, and they've had some really dominating victories. In particular, Space Station Gaming, I know they had a absolute whooping, and I think it was another tournament, can't exactly remember which, um, but, but they just destroyed SSG 13 to 5 or 13 to 4. And why I think that is a bit of an interesting game to go off of is one, because it's incredibly recent, and two, they were up against a Viper in that case. And mm. every time that Ambox have played Icebox, they have once again brought out the Viper onto Poach. So what I'm thinking right here is that it's very likely that we're going to be seeing more Poach Viper for starters, but also mm. Sentinels kind of with the experience on how to deal with that and maybe some repeats of what we saw against Space Station Gaming a little bit while back. And it was actually very recent in my brain, just having watched the episode, but it was uh, Sean Garris who said that the the number one team in North America and whoever is going to kind of make the, the best run and finish things out the strongest is that team that figures out Icebox, is that right. team that masters Icebox. Because when you're that higher seed, you can play around those vetoes, the map bans, the map picks, and Icebox could just always be something in your arsenal, kind of the way Split was just recently. And still, now that there's a couple more maps, we see Split a little less. But it was that map where some teams would just kind of run the show on it. And if you look at Split from Sentinels, you look at Icebox from Sentinels, if those are two maps that they just have figured out, things start to get scary. Once you get into their, those vetoes, you ban a couple of maps away, and it, it almost looks like two maps are always going to go the way of Sentinels being that number one quote unquote seated team, although Hunter Thieves did win uh, first strike. Now, I don't want to count out Anbox, obviously. Right. Not only has this been the tournament of upsets yesterday being the, the most of that, the Viper's still viable here, but I kind of want to come to you in, in thinking about what 
comp here what do you lose when you bring that second controller right it's you know shazam on the jet basically similar composition across the board except you have a sage in there and an anboxer down one duelist is the viper still kind of the play here even if that player is comfortable on it i want to say yes because i look at the compositions that they've run they have never not run viper okay and i think some of the setups that they had at least on split you know that i think that's the closest comparison that we're going to get because mm -hmm. that's also where they run ran the omen viper i think it kind of fits their style you know i mean a viper's pit over towards i don't know aggro b aggro a mid it opens up a ton of options for you i don't think it's the worst pick in the world i suppose i can say but they're gonna have to surprise me viper isn't really right. played much by anybody and we're looking at one of the two teams that regularly run it one of Actually, I think the only team in North America who runs it regularly on Icebox. It's early days. This map has yet to be completely figured out. I, I want to say yes. I think the Viper can work for them, but it's going to need to happen soon. Sentinels are on a tear right now, stealing away the map pick. They have to do it again, I suppose. Anbox surprise me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Anbox are going to have to steal away the map pick here. Is, is, is yeah, it yeah. Sentinels picking this one up and... Yeah, I don't want to keep harping on the Viper. It's just interesting to me. What I do yeah. could step away from now, it's just agent picks as a whole. We've been seeing some teams start to hover over towards that Brimstone. Do you think that we start to see something like that? I think Viper kind of brings almost the same thing to the table. You only have one smoke, but you have that post plant idea or just the ability to close something out. Now that we jump over to Icebox, it's a little different than Split. Do you think we get to see that Brimstone kind of making its appearance here? I don't think it's un, like unfathomable. Mm -hmm. I, I think just kind of by the scent, the way the Sentinels play, they fight for a lot more map control in post plants than I think a lot of teams typically would. I, I'm not sure if the Brim doesn't necessarily not suit them, but I think they just would be completely fine with having an Omen. Zoms is really good at it anyway, and the fact that he's hovering it right now makes me kind of think that he agrees with the idea. Yeah. Indeed, the Omen has been locked, so we're not going to be seeing any Brimstone action. I suppose time and place. I want to see a little bit more of that guy. You know, the, the Molotov lineups in itself is infinite skill cap. And I would imagine Sinatra runs Raze here? I'm not 100% sure what they're thinking right now. Obviously, he's just kind of meme hovering, but, you know, Raze seems like the best option for them. And that's kind of my, my general thoughts on this agent select. I don't think we're going to be seeing anything all too groundbreaking, Tanner. Yeah, pretty standard across the board. Pretty standard no across so. the board. Uh, ooh, okay, it looked like a little switch at the air, maybe towards or at the end towards Reyna, but it is looking to be standard. I thought for a second, because we talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast, quite possibly seeing one of your duelists or one of your more aggressive players playing on that sky and uh, trying right. to get a bit more information for your team and just being able to make it work like that. But we are looking to head over. This is a sageless icebox mind you a sageless yeah. icebox so it feels like icebox is both of these teams oysters when you have just so many opportunities so many avenues of approach now tube is going to be open you're not having to worry about the the sites getting walled off and your you know the plants on the other side whatever that may be so i'm interested to see how they play this one out or is it just going to be what feels defaulted on icebox that either <laughs> A, every single round strat, or B, every single round strat. I'm interested to see if we get a little bit of love up towards mid. And it is looking like everybody for Sentinels hovering on over towards this B site. You never know, though. They could completely switch things up at the last moment. But yeah, no, it seems like a very one-track-minded sort of push. Oh, yeah, look at that. They are switching okay. things up. Spike, it's dawdling its way over towards a little bit of an a bias but we can only be so excited by seeing the radar watching it and i think we have a little bit of a tech pause so you're actually going to be seeing our faces for a little bit longer so congrats um <laughs> but to kind of talk about these compositions now that we actually have what we're working with hmm. sageless comps i kind of want to touch on that real quick because in the earlier days of an already pretty new map icebox you saw a lot of sage like you mentioned hmm. she is almost picked every single time when you see her in ranked she does offer a lot up and you usually you usually see her over by kitchen when she's on yeah. the defensive end so i think you're going to be seeing a lot more focus and a lot more emphasis from whoever's attacking towards kitchen now that you're no longer going to see that that crazy uh sentinel used in that area so keep your eye open for that how do you feel about 
does the viper kind of do the same thing for you right especially so poach starting on defense you you kind of wall off that area towards mid so the attackers can't even see tube or underneath tube whatever it may be it, it kind of makes pushing out that way a bit scary because you don't know what's on the other side is that enough or do you think the sage does just feel like the kind of end all be all when it comes to stopping that tube push it's not necessary, you know, it, not mm. the quintessential best, but I feel like it's maybe the easiest to execute. Energy in the past have run it, Phase have run it in the past. There are some clever boosts that you can do with the wall as well that I always yeah. like to bring up where you, you angle it so it's slightly outward mm -hmm. your jet can jump yeah. on top of it. You, you can get as exploratory as you want with it, but this is the co comp that they're comfortable with and they don't run Sage, again, looking at my stats here, so... If they can make this double controller work with the Viper and Omen, I think you know they'll definitely have Kitchen on lock in their own way, but it's going to be unique. And this is something, again, that I want to mention that Sentinels have been up against against uh, Space Station Gaming in the past. Mm -hmm. So they have experience with this sort of matchup. Also, now's the time to, you know, try things out. You are playing for seeding when it all comes down to it. And you can have a little bit of fun with it. You can explore a lot of things. And that's what I think is going to be vital. You're going to be seeing a lot more theory crafting maybe lie you know you're going to be the witness yeah. to it anything could happen and again that's what i love about valorant i i really appreciate you bringing that up while we are in this tactical pause and the players are getting things figured out so if you guys aren't familiar the top eight teams from the open qualifiers here which we're at we're in the quarterfinals all eight teams here have have qualified for the first closed qualifiers there's going to be three opens three closes then leading into masters now these eight teams you're probably thinking, why are they doing it now? And it is just like Ito said, playing for seeding. So we're not going to see the same quarterfinal matchups unless some way, somehow the seeding just plays out like that and we get it all the same. I would assume that's not going to be the case. And those close qualifiers get their $50,000 prize pool where all of these teams have in the money playing for either that $1,000 eighth place prize or that $25,000 first place prize once we get there to the close qualifiers. Now it is gonna be that quick B hit with on the, my but he comes through the spawn. Bot Spike planted. Gonna have that in the bank shells, get oh, actually quite a bit of utility there and box. Wow. Striking is huge here, two quick kills to come on through, but the spike has since been planted. Yay doing his due diligence here to make sure that no nano swarms on the spike and somehow miss shot dapper comes out on, on top, has a bit of decay. We'll be able to heal that one back up and through wow. the smoke. Dapper just having fun with it. Sick to close it out. And it was looking good for Anbox until it wasn't. It was looking so good for them too. They had successfully kind of corralled Sentinels into that lower part of uh, the site. Not lower part, but uh, the, the back part of that site. Mm -hmm. Kind of back into their own spawn, if you would. It was a really rough go for them, and yet they still just won every single individual fight that they needed to. It was Sick who I believe tossed out a dart at the perfect time as well, who caught that player kind of ducking in and out of the dark cover. That was messy from Andbox, undeniably, but you can't do anything but respect the gall for Sentinels to somehow fight and brawl their way out of it. And, like I always like to say, they're going to be rewarded for it. Second round should be going their way because they do have a heavy artillery advantage. And box, however, have completely stacked over towards A. And why this is so big is because Sentinels are starting to sniff this out. They've walked up towards B, cut noise even though they didn't necessarily even need to. And they're getting a really good read on just how free this is. So it'll be a nice free spike plant for them, free of charge. And Ito, it's the classic eco stack. Let's stack one site, play tight corners, and hope they come this way. And you know as is tradition they don't go that way they go to the opposite site now we get to see kind of a silly retake here's all five are stacked up just pushing on through and zoms might just have a heyday here with the bulldog in hand only goes good for one does get a little scary now as that's going to be a rifle in the hands of anbox as they look to push up shazam holding this one Sick on a tight angle as well. Ghost goes good for one. Maybe looking for a second. He hears the reload. He's going to come on in. Find another. They're just closing it out here. Sentinels, it was looking to go their way the whole time. But Ambox once more put up a fight. Unfortunately, only picking up one kill in that one. So hurting the economy of one. We'll see what the answer back is here. And now we're in round three. And for some reason, we're seeing some light armors on the side of Ambox. So yay, not necessarily in the best spot getting that full buy. 
I think they're banking on the fact that they might be bonusing. That's my only guess. Well, it's only one light armor. It's it's a sacrifice that you have to make, you know? Uh, yay, he just kind of has to take a gamble that, hey, I'm going to be able to win my fight convincingly enough where that extra 25 points of armor isn't going to make a completely round-changing difference. And it looks like a gamble that actually seems to have worked out for them. They do find the opening kill, that is. Yay. There's a bit of a response from Sentinels. This is such a weird push, too. Because, really, they're given the entirety of the B bomb site, And all it took was a single Hunter's Fury to completely zone out the Antibox defenders. That is such a crazy round. You have to go back and look at that time and time again to really dissect it. That makes me want to go into a custom match with somebody and see how suppressed footsteps are when the Hunter's Fury is just ripping at you because it was <laughs> Dapper whose footsteps, his footsteps were completely suppressed and was able to flank all the way up onto Poach who was being targeted by that Hunter's Fury. Such a huge play. Dapper does end up going down after finding a 3K. Unfortunately, boy on 10 HP with a spike planted. One walk away from this one. I would imagine he gets hunted down to Shazam is headed that way and we could quite possibly see a nice little classic kill to come on through. No, it's going to be a ghost. And there's the picture in picture. The smoke goes through. Unfortunately, that dark cover not going to do you too much. Good boy. At the end of the day, Sentinels now up 3-0. And Box will find themselves once more on an eco. And this is looking pretty reminiscent of map number one, Ito. Getting a bit of deja vu, that's for sure. Sentinels seemingly having everything going their way. Good reads, and of course, a great idea for them to chase after that gun. They kind of squared on, on a location that boy could be. So, I mean, hey, just collect the gun, and Anbox now have effectively zero tools to work with. They will bring sheriffs to the table, as well as a couple of bits of armor, ghosts here and there. But once again, they're going to try gambling a site. What I think they need to do, now that we have maybe a bit of leisure time, Sentinel should be able to clean this one up, is I think they need to have a lot more of an emphasis over towards B. Because that's twice now that they've completely conceded it, whether it was just by a single pair of footsteps or a single Hunter's Fury. I think Poach has the right idea. He's pushing up close, but Sentinels are not even going to give him the time of day, as they will look to go over towards A this time, Tanner. And nothing really to stop that lockdown from coming through, so everybody going to be forced away. Sam just looking to eat it there, the eco round. One detain comes through. I believe they were able to walk away as Shazam finds Poach on the flank. Boy, able to pick one up on the way out. So forced up a ghost here and is just trying to do some damage to the economy and is doing just that. Can he find himself a weapon? Paranoia in hand. Able to use that shrouded step into the dark cover. Does still have the flash available. Finds another kill in Anbox. Well, they're looking to do something spicy here. Is Android from downtown. The ultimate to come through. The showstopper. Looking to lock it down here. There's Last no way in for standing. Sick. He's not going to toss it out. He's going to get shot down. He comes off the spike, but yay. Pops the grave thrifty. of Sick in the end box. A thrifty victory against here. all odds. A good craftsman never blames his tools, and Anbox right there are the pinnacle example of that. With nothing more than a couple of pistols, they have made magic. A beautiful project that comes together and allows them to pick up that first round. At such a pivotal moment, mind you, as well, Tanner. The money isn't broken by Sentinels, don't get me wrong, but it definitely is going to be hurting a lot more. They win this. They suddenly have control of the eco. This is now another huge round that Ambox need to win. What have they learned from the early game? More pressure is being applied over towards B. Poach has set down his wall. These are exactly, you know, these are the adaptations that Ambox need to make, and they're doing them. Already a bit fruitful as they've picked up Dapper to start things out. And actually, Android on the other side of the map, I think, found another. There's a strike back from Sentinels, but it has been relatively muted. They still stay a player down, Sentinels, and Box in the lead. Got one. Seb, that's just Sinatra looking the opposite direction. And in a 3v2, and Box looks to pick up another round. Now, a lot of utility out of the way is that Killjoy is dead, and Shazam going to take the aggressive beats out towards the spawn. Oh, what an He's going to get taken down off the off, and he didn't even expect it. It's all up to Zom, so has to try and clutch it out. Picks up one of three. Needs to find another couple. Is that Boombot not going to get the value that they were hoping for? He has paranoia. 
Nades come through. Does have full utility. He's able to pick up another Zoms. Looking for a 4K. Shroud is oh, no. away. No. He oh. glitches out, but he still gets it. Zoms. Against all odds in the game. Kind of being wonky. Absolutely huge there. The omens in this game, Ito. Going new here. The leader of his own nation now pops off as well. Zoms. It, it, it's not often that you're going to see teleport bug actually work out, but for some reason, they fell hook, line, and sinker to it. A massive one versus three snatches away the round that Ambox should have had. And like I said, that was so massive, and the fact that they don't win it means that they're going to be hurting. They are on this poverty buy right now. Things are undeniably terrible, but Ambox have made this work before with a little bit less who say that they can't repeat history. Screen down. <laughs> We're five, six rounds in as Sinatra picked up that first kill and things are already getting spicy. I'm all in to sweat and it took 30 rounds or 20 rounds, excuse me, in the last to get me there. Now Sinatra oh, what a shot. will fall the Guardian. Gonna pop the grape there. Boy coming out on top once more. Using these awkward weapons, it was a ghost for a 3K. And well, Guardian goes good for one. And then it's since stopped this push. It's actually a Guardian in the hands of Android 2. So this Anbox team. Coming up huge here with these rifles. And I'm on an awkward buy, but they're making it work so far. In the 4v4, they have a few ultimates available. A beautiful what? shock dart. You just have to tip your hat sick here. When you get those unique kills, absolutely huge for your team. Now, Seth, probably just going to get run down. No, he's oh going to do the running down. Sick will fall. No more utility left. kills for you. As the spike looks to get planted, the clock ticking down. The paint shells to deter for a moment longer. But they still have 20 seconds to work with. And box down to their last two. Operator in the hands of one. Not going to find no shots. There's the shot from Shazam. A beautiful headshot at that. Zombs plants wow. the spike. Gets the kill. And Sentinels find another. And box. Their one victory here, it had take, taken a Herculean effort. It took the whole squad to come up clutch, and they just have not been able to reciprocate. Sentinels are just playing it so well, though, man. They were incredibly patient for there. They ran down the clock, but left more than ample time for them to get the spike down and account for the factor that, an that uh, Android excuse me, might have his paint shells available. So even though... Android toss him out, and that would have been great if the timer was just down a little bit more. If they accounted for that, Sentinels, they move forward now onto five rounds. And look at this next new approach from Anbox. They're starting to push mid. Two players down with a dark cover right in front of them. It's a new setting, and with the Viper's Pit now to maybe adorn mid and a bit more of their style, Sentinels need to adjust. The fact that they're so close over towards A, though, makes this a reek of a burst potential. Shadows traveling. Oh, but it's scary when you know Sick does have that Hunter's Fury available. And what's even scarier, Sinatra finding a kill Fight onto your raise. And Box down a member here, so things aren't necessarily swinging their way. And the Viper all out towards mid. Doesn't get a whole lot of value. I'm not too sure how much Sentinels were banking on being able to play up towards tube as Sinatra can't be stopped. As I say it though, Seb oh, gonna sit him down. Wall. Now the spike planted. Everybody from Sentinels playing off of this one. It's been pinged out. The nano swarms have been used. Full utility just about here for Zoms. Zom from downtown is able to find oh. a kill through the wall here. The Viper screen working against them. And Anbox fall once more. What does the economy look like? Because it has to be getting dire here, round number eight. Absolutely dire. But again, you know, this is why you never count any round out. Anbox, they have won on an eco before. They've won on a thrifty before, rather. It doesn't feel all too impossible to maybe see it again. But Sentinels have undeniably have had control over every single aspect of this game from start to finish. Beautiful calls, beautiful mid rounds, and they just look indomitable right now. They have had to use absolutely nothing except when they absolutely need to. That utility has been used so sparingly, it's only the essentials. But Sentinels maybe have been punished for not using it liberally enough. I have this They've actually lost a couple of fights. The action happens so quickly, we can only watch one POV there. What the hell has happened? Have Ambox actually done it again? Beneath our noses. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the, the, <laughs> the pistol squad. The the thrifty squad. Handbox. It's 
battling back. This is that that David and Goliath esque story. And for, unfortunately, the first one didn't go their way. But you pick up a couple more here early in this game, then you're not in that same spot. Now, sick on the back foot. It's been a while since we've seen him here. He does have shock darts available. He does have the hunter shuri, and oh, unfortunately, he does get spotted out. This is a bad spot. Bad spot, but maybe he can fake it out by walking. Because he might think, oh, did he back up? Could he be possibly CT at this point? You see that Poach now has to kind of check he's behind as a result. And boxes need to stay patient here. 30 seconds left. There's no good reason to give up a second one versus three. Now the players are particularly hurting, and the one who is is in more than a safe position. Oh, wait, look at that. The turret has actually been taken down because he moved far enough away. That is huge. Now, Sick has the potential to get an ult off here. He's going to be using his guard out, left. planting as safe as he possibly can. Snowman wow. will be his boon as he quickly backs off over towards the defender spawn. It's now an open book, and he needs to write the story. And he's got the utility for it. He could play so far off, especially if for whatever reason he has the lineups. Does look like he wants to take the fight right to him, though. He knows that the arsenal not necessarily in their favor. <gasps> And they're searching high and low. Not going to spot him just yet. Seb finally does. And Sick, unfortunately, can't do the unthinkable there. It was looking spicy. And imagine the momentum that would have brought towards Sentinels. If they don't already have it through the roof, you pick up a 1v3 in, in a situation like that. It would have been absolutely huge. Instead, though, it's Anbox. You look at the kills. You look at the scoreboard. You wouldn't necessarily assume that they're in the driver's seat. And they're not. But as I said previously... You just need to do more than you did in the last, especially if you are going to come out strong on the attacking side. If you don't go down 11 to 1, I mean, you're already in a better position than game one. If you don't go down 11 to 1, you have so much more to work with. I know that's the obvious, but that is the position <laughs> that Ambox are in now. Well, Ambox are not out of the clear. You're, they're not in the clear yet, rather. Because five ultimates adorn the side of Sentinels, and I don't think they're going to be incredibly conservative with them. They have no reason to hold on to every single one of these, especially since we are in now the latter part of this half. Blow a couple, double satchel in, do something crazy. Whatever it takes to get that next round on the board and once again, ruined Anbox. The only rounds Anbox have won, mind you, are Ecos. They don't have the best track record for gun rounds. Maybe you can go ahead and keep it that way. Boy, he watches from a unique angle here. There's a Killjoy lockdown being used, and here begins the fall tanner. Shadows traveling. It's looking no to be that Move way. On. Counter lockdown to come on through, but there's the Hunter's Fury. That's big. That is the absolute best thing about having not only sick on your team, but turret. that Hunter's Fury available. Seb somehow gets a third kill. It's going to be traded back. Sinatra goes aggressive, but will fall. But from downtown Shazam, still holding things down with that operator. And now a 2v2. The spike is dropped on the site. So for now, and Box are in the driver's seat. They are in control. They're going to do even more. They're going to take a man advantage and close it out. A third round to And Box. And 6-6 six to six act the half isn't looking too undoable, Ito. It's looking a lot less scary. A lot less insurmountable. And they've already made their way halfway there. 6-6, six to six, like you said, definitely not impossible. But it's not just done yet sentinels they still have a couple of more ultimates to work with they're going to be choosing to force up into this next round i was waiting to see this buy because shazam does have that blade storm available and that does pack a huge punch sentinels i think right now what they're going to be looking for here is a massive change of pace try to quicken yeah, things up way. a little bit you've had a wonderful success rate with it so far use that blade storm to your advantage and just go ahead and immediately close the distance but yay is ready for it first shot through back up get out of dodge and live to fight another day and box are on the right start they close things out they completely slow things down look at this keep your eye on the radar they are trying to sell this fake a little bit more Here. if they can. They're not committed to the idea. And Anabox are a little bit confused. Their rotations are a little bit out of whack as a result. So they need to push for information. But as a result of doing this, they might give up their lives. Android is in such a scary position. And he can't really afford to go an inch further. So, so scary. And that's exactly why you're just a knife away dying. And Anbox suddenly have had things evened up on them. Blocking. 
and right back to playing it slow. Sentinels, they're doing their due diligence. After dropping a couple of rounds, they go back to uh, slowing things down, trying to get a bit better of a read. The overwhelming play style hadn't worked in the last two, so they left. go back to the playbook. It is a 4v4, but those knives still very scary. No longer rotating towards mid, though. It's going to link up with the team over towards A as the recon bolt goes through. Poach might have a nice angle. Not going to have the shots on target, though. I don't even know if he had time to react. Sick goes huge there, picking up that kill. As Sentinels left. look to go back to their winning ways. The spike planted. Now working against the clock is Anbox, but on the flank goes Seb. He finds one Shazam, though. He sneaks away and finds the kill, and you just cannot down. count this team Steve. out. Sentinels continue to impress. Now Ye trying to answer back with blades of his own in a 3v2. The smokes oh. go through, now a 2v2. Shazam and Ye are gonna go toe to toe. It's the Jets, it's Ye on top. And boy, to close it out, it looked good for Sentinels, but Anbox steal it away. That is what we've been really hoping to see out of Anbox for so long now. That discipline and the mentality to get through when things are so rough. Beautiful play by Ye in particular. Boy, he wasn't even there for moral support. He provided so much good utility. That dark cover forced Shazam out of position to take a very disadvantageous fight. And that was more than enough for Anbox to leap upon the opportunity and get closer and closer to six rounds. Another full buy in play. Sentinels, with all due respect, made that one incredibly close considering some of the tools that they had to work with. But they need to do even better. It's that motto that you've been trying to show and uh, maybe give to me, Tanner. I like it. And I'm going to try to steal it for myself. You have to do better for this round, but it's not off to the best start. Ye once again finds the opener. This time it's going to be on the Dapper. So they don't have any of those Nano Swarms available, but at least they have the Showstopper. That double satchel play isn't going to be really all too unreasonable to expect from Sinatra. This is a, a very similar start to that last round as well. They toss out that dart, it gets shot down, and last time they rotated away. So maybe trying to bait an early rotation, which may have just done that. It drew a bit of attention over towards mid or A. There's the late rotate. No, it actually is just going to be to pick up the orb and coming right back. So Sentinels... Holding fast here, trying to take this B site. Smokes go out, Shazam. Trying to block things out. From the shadows goes through. We're not gonna get a lot of value, get so much info, but it doesn't matter. Seb to find Zombs, there's the satchel. Then you talked about the showstopper. Nope, and Sinatra is here and he's not gonna play. Two kills to the raise. Shazam to get the spike down, make it a third and Sinatra, the man of the hour here, trying to get the better half of remaining. this half. He finally will fall, and it's all up to Shazam in a 1v2. Low HP, and Poach is sitting on the Viper's Pit. Shazam has the clock in his favor, can work with the spike, and we'll see what is going to be assumed. The tap onto the spike, the spike oh! comes through, and Shazam to close it out. Sentinels oh, wow. grab seven rounds. You guys suck. A master round in his in game. Half. Whether it's CS, whether it's Valorant, he just always pops off 12 and 5 right now. And what an amazing time to come alive. Sentinels, through the thick and the thin, they are pulling these rounds together. It looks so one sided at the start. And Box, of course, he let that one falter, as you see reflected in the scoreboard score line. But <sighs> 5 to 7 is still possible. I'm just not sure if Sentinels are even going to give them the time of day. They have been looking so prime. It's just unreasonable. Once again, they go... Oh, actually, no. I, I think you're about to say the same thing I was, man. No, it, I, I wasn't. I was just going to harp on that. Insult to injury. The Jet voice line at the end was, Wow, you guys suck. And that just <laughs> feels so bad. I would imagine that's going to be in a YouTube video somewhere. No Live Valorant fails. Run. This is going to be anything but a fail. As they have just completely taken the site with zero reply from Anbox. Again, I'm getting a little bit of deja vu because this is something that we are no stranger to seeing. They finally get that spike down about the minute mark and that will prompt Anbox to start pushing in because it is a 5v5 and the first person who finds that frag gets it in their favor. That, of course, is going to be void. But that dart comes oh, online and all the kills might come online as well. Sinatra out of nowhere fights four. 
and you cannot expect the wild card factor like that Switching every sides. single round he seemingly pops off as well before it was shazam to close it out now it's gonna be sinatra sinatra it's with a buff at the end of the half they're looking so strong to help his team close it out obviously shazam with the clutch in that round of previous but a 4k <laughs> to kind of crush the dreams of getting a seven to five half from Ambox. It's better than map one, Ito. These replays, man, the, the multi-kills that we've seen from both teams, boy coming up huge. Shazam and Sinatra obviously going huge. Seb even having some good angles on it on top of it all and a turret kill. I don't know if we're gonna get that in the replay, <laughs> but that feels pretty good. Yeah, that was, I, I'm not 100% sure to have to go back and watch the tape of it, but I think that was actually because his, his own teammate, Hunters, feared him, and mm. he was down to low enough HP, and he just kind of, well, died to machinery. But what a wonderful half that was. It really could have gone either way, but consider this. Anbox started that one down so much, and a bunch of heartbreaking rounds, too, yeah. that they couldn't close out, and yet they still made this convincing. This was the map pick of Sentinels, mind you, but it's looking a lot more competitive than Split, I think, at times ever was. This map has surely been delivering. This game has surely been delivering. And God, <laughs> I honestly think anything can happen at this point. I do believe we have a bit of a technical pause, though, so you do have a chance to clap, glimpse at our faces while we talk about what we just saw right there. And Tanner, I want to hear your initial thoughts because I've been rambling for a while now. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. Sentinel is looking incredibly strong. I would I would say if, you know, any inclination, if game one was any inclination as to what kind of team Anbox is, it's a team that's going to fight. And it's a team that is coming here to take down one of the Titans, if not the Titan, uh, the team to beat that are at the very least left in the top eight here. And it's very doable. They put up a solid comeback. I believe it was six rounds five rounds in a row then maybe another one so six rounds total on the defensive side being down 11 to 1 and that is a lot of pressure maybe yeah. for the pros it's a little different right maybe in my solo queue games when i'm at 11 to 1 it feels weird but when you're in this situation do you you know shake off the 11 to 1 or are you kind of crumbling under the pressure and they didn't now they're in a better place they're starting off in a better spot on the king side here Four rounds to eight. It's not the end of the world. This is, you can still come back from this. A lot of it relies, I was going to say, on the first shots here from Shazam, and he's forced to back away. So I think Ambox already got themselves a nice little, uh, a nice little one up here in this pistol round. For now, and Ambox continue to try to innovate. The Viper Ball brought into play is going to be good to find Shazam on the entry, and that will now. Let them embark onto the A site without many further issues. There is one kill from Zom for the Frenzy, but he's quickly dispatched up without any further issues. Sentinels down 4v2, need to pull off a miracle of a post plant, but they don't have a lot of utility to work with. They have the time, but do they exactly have the space? Paint shells are available here for Anbox. Napper looking to get aggressive. Okay, paint shells oh, no longer down. available. Xandroid goes down, and now you don't really have to Last worry about it. Oh, there's standing. the Nano Swarm to try and stop things for now. Sick falls, only 35 HP was the Sova. Now 18 on a Dapper, and he's running out of time. He's just got to send it some way, somehow, in a 1v3. He's got to get three kills and find a defuse, but the clock is ticking down, and he's just going to try to find a way to pad the stats on the way out. Nope, he will die. Boy will go down, and thankfully... Five patches ago or whatever it was, that no longer counts towards your death count. So your KDA not going to be hurt <laughs> by that one. But maybe the morale a little bit. As Anbox, they pick up that pistol round. We've seen what they can do with that. They can usually string a few together. Now full SMGs across the board. Yay, hanging on to that ghost. I'm thinking maybe saving for an op on the attacking side. We saw what Shazam could do with it. Just about every single kill, I think, coming from the operator on attack. I think Yay is looking to put up the same numbers. <laughs> Well, every round, but there is a notable exception where they uh, got that crazy 1v2 spray down, lest you forget oh, true, that. True, true. <laughs> but there's a variety of highlights that Sentinels have gotten this series. I don't blame you for maybe misremembering one here or there, but 
This will be another chance for Anbox as we go ahead and shift our focus to this round. We're not going to be seeing those operators in play, much less are we going to be seeing rifles. It's going to be pistols versus SMGs all the way, and Anbox, they don't necessarily want to start... What just happened there with Zom? How did he find that kill on the Yay? That's actually insane. That opens things up a lot more, I think. Sentinels, they can start pushing in a little bit more if they want to. They need to fight for space. Oh, but they aren't. They're going to concede it instead. Anbox should have the site free of charge. Ooh. One enemy remaining. Yeah, that, that makes it a bit more free as everybody holding down the site just gets mowed down, even from a distance, with those specters. Sinatra is a Spike member of player on this team that you can't count out, so I would think that at the very least with the paint shells and that classic, he might just be good for one and... He's sure just gonna say, he's gonna look for something okay, flashy. Dude. There it is, the I... bunny hop right click. Oh man, you just... It's the whole package with Sinatra. Even uh, in a 1v4, he still uh, comes through. Dude, Android's hairline has to be receding because of that one. <laughs> yeah. I'd be mauled if I died to that, man. Yeah, Sinatra, can you ever just die normally? Do you always have to <laughs> right. go out on this crazy flash of valor? Sure, that's what Ambox are thinking right now, but if you're a Sentinels fan, you love to see it. Even in losses, they look beautiful. They're falling with style, if you would. But now, they might not be falling at all. Take a look at this buy right here, Tanner. It looks wonderful for the side of Sentinels. And it's because of that rifle factor. Anbox in the past did manage to win a bonus round, and it was actually on a uh, split, which was a relatively one-sided game. Considering this upward momentum, this upward trajectory that we're on, I don't think it's all too unreasonable wow. to expect it to happen again, and that's the start that you need if you want to make it happen. Sick is down, no darts in play, and now there's going to be no nanoswarms in play because Dapper has gone down as well. Engineer killed. Sinatra still alive though, planted. and still has that pop-off factor for the Sentinel squad, and in a 2v4, definitely feels like Sentinels have an extra man. Able to find a tag onto Boy, who's able to creep away for now, and they could just play the spike, so not a bad place to be. You don't have to re-peek that, especially when Sinatra's feeling as hot as he is. Trying to pick all the gunfights in the world, and that Viper Wall doing a pretty good Paranoia. job of clearing things out. Full utility onto Zombs. As he tosses it out, there's the snake bite though. So that's gonna delay the defuse for a moment longer. And Poach might just have another one. So they gotta send it to him. Zom <laughs> through the box, finds the kill, and Sentinels on their first rifle are gonna have to try and escape here. Satchel to get away, and Sinatra will stay alive, as will Zom. So everybody there except for that kill coming through at the end. Nobody dying to the spike. Sentinels do let that round go by the wayside. And it's a couple of vandals, but the rest of the team behind him have to come up huge if we take a look at the ultimates even then it's feeling like a rough eco you're not close to the blades the lockdown not very close you're not really close to anything here for sentinel so this round i want to say should go the way of van box it should be a nice easy pickup and the way that the economy is it might just hurt if you do pick up this round sentinels could be in a bad spot in the next we're seeing, seemingly setting themselves up for disaster if they don't win this. They have invested a good amount of money. I didn't actually get to see how much Sinatra has in reserve. He might still be okay. He might have just bought, like, right at the margin he needs to to have enough next round. But mm -hmm. regardless, he has a rifle for this round here. And you have to pay attention to that because we've seen what he can do previously. It's not too unexpected to see it again. I mean, I always need to kind of add a disclaimer and asterisk to everything because there is that pop-off factor. There is that insane play. You always have to account for the wild card, and I think I maybe haven't been giving that enough justice. Sentinels, however, haven't been able to really start anything early on in this round. And as we cross the minute mark, we still stay at a 5v5. There is Pochu who's just kind of waiting over towards B, so he is trying to maybe sell something, maybe bait out a rotator or two, and maybe allow his team to push up with him. You see that they're backing out with a spike in tow. This completely opens up an avenue of opportunity as a Zanbox maybe look to finish things up here over towards B, and only Sinatra as well as Dapper might have a chance to stop this. Oh, Dapper, unfortunately, not getting left. any vision over the top of that wall, so not going to spot anybody pushing up, although they know they're there now. No shots to come on through, nothing early to stop that one. All 10 members still alive here on Icebox. And Marshall, it's, uh, it's a loud one. That, <laughs> that gun is a loud one as those shots come on through. They're just sending them from downtown, trying to find anything they can. Sentinels are going to have to pull the trigger here soon, and it's looking like Sinatra trying to do just that. Nice paint 
shells back for yellow. Three members gonna be there. Boy gonna find the first kill. The satchels put him in a bad spot. Now Android trying to answer back through the smoke they go. And the kill feed is all red as it's Anbox to look to close this one out. Sick grabs one, but Anbox. Five to one is a favorable trade and another round one. Ito, we are all knotted up at eight. <sighs> Sentinels just <laughs> having trouble. I mean, not having trouble. They're just unreal in some aspects. It's just such a, a weird position that we have right there. The wall was so good, and they just staved off the inevitable for so long. And Ambox, of course, will be rewarded with the victory there. But... <sighs> I, I want to point out one player in particular, Ye. He was in such a good position because of the fact that he was at pincer over towards mid. So in case anything went wrong, he was there to trade out. And he didn't really even have to do much, but he still got a kill for his trouble. Look at this fight for the orb. That's actually massive. He's getting a bit closer to that lockdown. Not quite there yet, but keep an eye on that coming. Maybe, if not this round, next round. Overall, though, we again stay quite here, Tanner. 5v5. Uh around the minute mark. I don't think a frag's gonna happen soon, unless, of course, I just cast this first. Shazam, out of nowhere, picks up the first. A couple of good trades as now Ambox looks to pick up the pace, push in immediately, and Sentinels, at least they're dealing with it rather well. They have held the line and not allowing them to go any further. Ambox once again have to reconsider their choices if they even want to be here. And poach on the flank. I was putting my my eggs in that flank basket, but he whiffs that first shot, tries to go back for the challenge, and that turret and get the info that he is in fact still there. The spike in the corner, sick finds another kill. I think that was kind of the the last calling card for Anders. If that flank could have gotten any value, left. things might have looked to gone their way. Seb now one v four, a couple of ultimates to worry about. Just the, flash, just the firing squad there, Shazam to net the last kill, but no matter where Seb went, he was going to fall in that. And it took four rounds, but Sentinels finally battle back here. And I don't know if you saw at the beginning of that one, Ito, their economy, everybody was just about zeroed out. So a very right. important round to pick up in that one. It's pivotal, if I can use that word again. Yes. And really, I mean... As important as that was for Sentinels to piece together, it's not the end of the world for Anbox. It's still Tuesday for them. Their weekdays will continue as they have another buy-in play. They're I mean, they really shouldn't be rattled or shaken by this. They have been able to come back from a lot worse or at least put up a good fight in a lot of worse situations. They battled back from 1 to 5 or, or 1 to 6. I can't exactly remember which, but, you know, they've already made this so competitive. Once again, if they Get win this round, way. they have once again broken the ego of Sentinels. It's another important round for them to put together, as if that last one wasn't already pivotal. Oh, that's such a huge frag to find, though. Of course, you can always count on Sinatra to give you a frag, maybe two, maybe four if he's feeling Ooh. really on. But hey, this time it's only going to be a one-and-done position. Great kill. Great trade. Allows Anbox to even things up once more. Now, what I think they're going to be trying here, not 100% certain, but I think now they start to realize that A is going to be a little bit more free and that mid has been really successful for them for the most part. They should be able to catch one on rotation here. So they're going to cut noise, try to close the distance as much as possible, and then burst up onto the site, relying on Android for the late flank. 30 seconds left. Now we're starting to see the plays being made in his face is yay, but Shazam sits him down. Seb's able to trade back for two, and Anbox in the driver's seat. One player up, OHP on Android, puts him in a precarious spot. He is on the flank, though, and hopefully he can do a better job than Poach in the last six to drop down. Nano Storm trying to push him away. No, it's an alarm bomb. Makes him vulnerable. He gets absolutely melted, and Android on the flank goes good for one. This now is an awkward spot for Sentinels because the give and take that we have seen, not only in the rounds, but more importantly, Sick used the Hunter's Fury. Seb had not used the lockdown. Now Seb, finally, I think his fourth or fifth lockdown into this game is going to get value because he doesn't have to worry about it getting destroyed. I'm, I'm kind of wondering what was going through the minds here because it could just be another round win by Anbox. 
a bit of a Hail Mary, I suppose. And I think right on cue, there actually has been a call for a tech, or tactical pause, excuse me. And I think now is the perfect time to do it. Well, maybe not this round, but the next round that they have guns, I think that's when you're really going to start seeing the fruits of their labor, the fruits mm -hmm. of these efforts as they ponder their minds and try to find out exactly what's going wrong with Anbox here. Yeah. Because think about that round, is that it started out pretty good. Sentinels, you know, think about Shazam being able to find that initial kill. I think the turning point was really when Seb was able to find that 2K as he kind of danced around the smoke that was set on site. What I think Sentinels probably need to do a little bit more here is... See, it's, it's it's kind of a big question to make here because yeah. you can see everything from the driver's seat. But going off of the information that they have available, I think a bit more of an emphasis over towards mid would be really, really important. Because that is not the first, and it definitely won't be the last time that Ambox try to exploit it. Well, absolutely not. And, and I think, if not a little bit more emphasis towards mid, maybe give Shazam an extra hand because that operator you gets put run. in a really weird spot once you're taking shots and have to reload. You need to try and get out of dodge and... Icebox doesn't necessarily allow for that. Now we do get nice to see shot. that lockdown come through, but Shazam! Operator no more, and it only takes one knife to sit down the imposter. Everybody from Sentinel stacked up towards this A site. It's another hit to come through from Anbox, and they just have to oh. get out of dog. The skill on the Sinatra is huge. That's Don't huge! Another, but Anbox are battling remaining. back. They back away from the spike, they give up the plant, they play for the gunfights, and they are just online. Now Zom trying to do the unthinkable. It's low HP on one, the Viper's Pit available. This would be the first lead for Antbox should they find this round win. Fucking Zom's close it out with 71 oh HP. Low oh. HP on Android, the kill not gonna come through. Zom's will fall, the spike is planted, and Antbox once more grab another round win and their first lead here on Icebox. That round was so scary. Look, man, Sentinels, it felt like they were... They shouldn't have ever had a chance. Again, consider what they had to work with, but they made it into a 4v5 and they damn near consolidated that into a round of their own. Sinatra, that showstopper, if he had a half a second longer, could have been a 2k. At the very least, a single kill. Poach, undeniably the MVP of that round. And because he got that kill onto Sinatra is why I have to point him out. That was huge for Anabox. They take the lead and they survive the scare of the Sentinel's Eco. Something to be very terrified of, mind you. They take the lead like you said, Tanner. And they have a couple of more tools to work with here. But keep an eye on that Killjoy lockdown that is in the hands of Dapper. Sentinels, that's going to be their best engine if they want to retake or even just kind of hold the site. They have to play around this ultimate here. You have to give respect to it just because of how important and how massive it is. For right now, though, once again, Ambox look to cut noise, gamble out of rotation oh if they can, and they're really lucky to find this opening kill, but they're just being walked like, watched like a hawk. Nice paint shells to kick things off. A paranoia comes through a dash on the side. Yeager with the first to fall. Sentinel trying to tie things up once more. But boy, is there to even the odds. There is the Killjoy Wait, ultimate you talked about. Maybe it finds something. No, Android on the way out. Gonna pick up Sinatra so the counterparts are falling one by one. A beautiful off shot goes wide. It splits the upright onto two Shazam. How did that oh, no. one miss? He's wishing he had it back with six. He's trying to close what? things out. It's Sentinel all around him, and the Viper's pit means nothing. Seb has to go huge. The turret to fall. It's a 1v3, but it's Dapper. Another imposter down, and Sentinels tie things up once more. You can never count them out, man. Sentinels are just insane. A 4v5 conversion, and it's another round where I just seem a little bit lost for words because of how many different moving factors there was, but that was... All things considered, a pretty expensive round from Sentinels. They did have to blow the lockdown like I mentioned, and it, it felt like a high opportunity cost, but they do even things up here. Money still not in the favor, but available for Antbox. So they have another buy in them, but we're not going to be seeing it nearly as flashy as some of these other rounds have been because of the lack of ultimates in play. What you're again, excuse me, instead going to see is a bit of a contact play off of this drone. Sinatra has switched up his approach over towards B, and this time has brought verticality as a factor. Okay. And thing is, 
Although we're talking about verticality, everything seems to be on an upwards trajectory as Sinatra is single-handedly putting Sentinels on his back. 11 rounds is seeming more and more possible, more and more palatable as time goes by. Oh. It's again Sinatra, man. How the hell does he just keep doing it? That was such a good mix-up by B, though. I'm sorry, just to... To, to bring that up real quick is that consider the way that they have been kind of disciplined into playing that round or to playing that position every single time and box they were not mm -hmm. aware that he would just be right behind the box that was massive anyway sorry uh <laughs> what were you gonna say Cause... no i mean it's just it's that flair it's it you could kind of see it especially early right in the i think it was right. the second round of the half where we said yeah, Sinatra is the last one left, but we know he's going to go out with style. He just, on Icebox, you could tell he's just feeling himself. And he's, the gunfights are going his way. Why not keep taking them? Especially when there hasn't been a, a an answer over towards that B side. They had been stacking up two for so long, but Anbox just continued to go towards A. The first time they head out towards B, they're not expecting Sinatra to be there. And he gets a huge kill. Now Zom's looking for a good one, but Shazam going to take it away from him. As that Nano Swarm not going to get popped, it gets taken it down. So Zom's going to be able to hold into his position. Able to use that Shrouded Step should he get into trouble. And Shazam just holding it down. Now this time around where Zom's is playing. Oh my goodness. Shazam just cannot be stopped here. They don't even get Sightline of the Sight and they're already dead. Beautiful round already, but it's not over yet. A 3v5 for them to overcome. And this is what I like seeing. Antbox once again having a bit more of an emphasis on towards mid. But Sentinels, they have learned their lesson, and he does the 360 for just the cinematics, the frag movie. I don't even know, but that Match is one point. sweet play. Sentinels, they move on to 12. Placing what in the world was that? Yeah. <sighs> Man, it, <laughs> there's nothing more fitting than the names of these players on Sentinels. And I'm sure that this has been hounded over and over throughout the entirety of the life of this roster. But every time an op shot comes through, it just makes you want to yell Shazam because he does it in style. And then Sick with a 3K making it look sick, right? It's so fitting for these players to be making the plays that they are making. And Box now... Probably not quite as excited as we are for those plays to come on through as the Arsenal. It's a little dinky here. Guardian in the hands of Boy is able to pop off with this one. We've seen it before. And now a bit different approach as they try and push up through mid. But Shazam with the Operator once more is going to have the angles over on this B site. Should be able to find anybody on the flank as well as they smoke that one off. The Boombot goes through. No information to be found. And it looks like Amba. Oh! <laughs> Okay, a bit of information to be found. I don't think that's going to do a whole lot, though. Ran out of battery. And they do seem to be heading back on over towards that A site. It's only been a couple of times towards B, so Anbox maybe giving this one a bit too much love. The read is, I mean, Sentinels just have it. They have it down pat when they come to this A site. They just get stomped. Now, Anbox on match point. It's all or nothing here. Sure, they qualify. But where will they be seated? Can they put themselves oh, up in the running? Is that find that first kill? They expected Zoms to be there. They find another. Sinatra will fall. Trading a kill onto Boy. There's the Hunter's Fury to come on through. And he's going to find the kill. The spike does go down. He might find another. No, the dash away. Sick. One with the ultimate. As Android trades it back on the flank. Now they have to be wary. Yay comes online as well. And Sick will fall. No 363k this time around. And we are eyeing overtime here on Icebox, Ito. This is just unbelievable. I still can't get over it, just how some of these rounds are working. Sentinels, I one thing I really paraded them for, or at least was cheering them on in my head for, is the fact that they finally gave a little bit more attention over towards mid, but once they give it up, and box go back to exploiting it, and they have just been doing such a beautiful job at doing that. Not all of their A splits have been bangers, don't get me wrong, but when they have gotten all the wheels turning, they look like a completely different team. And Box have put on one hell of a show. And we're not quite done yet, because like you said, over time seems very much possible. Unfortunately, that's not a clay pigeon that Shazam can shoot down. 
And you can always talk about how unfortunate this is for Sentinels and just think about how fortunate this is for Anvox because look at this. They found a key to victory. The lockdown will be used to start things off here and the knives, the blade storm right behind it, that's going to be their engine to push. Tanner, this is when all hell will break loose. Shazam was looking for something spicy on the way out. The A-Site completely taken. Pokes looking to be on the flank once more. Sinatra gonna try again. Toss out the ultimate. Goes good for one. Zep goes down, but he's gonna trade it back. Sick, able to help his fallen teammate and picks up another. He's usually good for a multi-kill. When he grabs one, he grabs two, and he's going to do just that. Now Poach trying to link up with his squad. The Q's coming on through. Sick finds a 3k. He will fall, but it's all That's down it? to Zombs. Sentinels will close it out, and in 2-0 fashion, they will grab this win in the quarterfinals. Unbelievable theatrics at the end. Sentinels putting on one amazing show. You have to respect Defenders it. Their win. discipline and just how strong their mental game is. They did those incredible mid-round adaptations, late-round adaptations, I think, more importantly, and they are well rewarded with this victory. And hey, they move on to semis. They still have potentially two more games to play, but for now, they're done. They can rest, yep. and they have a bit of time to, to veg, you know, to, to think about things. And Box, they put on an amazing performance there, but just at the very end, were unable to piece it and make it into map number three. I mean, hey... <sighs> You have to go ahead and just applaud them for the effort, though. Yeah, I mean, after losing on split, it could really go one of two ways, right? You think we go down incredibly early on Icebox once more. I think it was six to one or six to zero at one point. Right. Sentinels are up and you can just roll over. Or you can show that you're here for a reason. You're one of the top teams, especially here in contention, one of the top eights for the first open qualifiers for that exact reason, which is gonna take you into deep water 20 plus rounds, even when you're going down. And box, I mean, a huge hats off again. You're playing for seeding, so not a whole lot on the line. We yeah, could true. see this matchup again, I guess, uh, depending on where and box plays out. But this series, I mean, again, that 12 or 13 to seven early in the first one, the way that and box battled back it just, it makes you want to go watch this game where we're seeing these replays. It's so insane. For real. I felt like a, a hedge fund manager right now because I never <laughs> wanted to see this game stop. It was unbelievable the entire way through. Beautiful resilience for Anbox, even on map number one to fight back so hard. And of course, map number two. It's still fresh in our minds and it was still beautiful the entire way through. Anbox should not be depressed with this performance. Maybe go through and workshop that split a little bit more. It felt like maybe not quite as uh, crazy as they would have hoped for their map pick, but this is what Sentinels do best. They are just so, so good at this game right now. Undeniably one of the Titans of North America. A bit of a contentious title to call them the best in North America, but definitely up there. They are proving it game after game, and Anbox, well, seemingly no match for them. What I will say, too, as as the matchup kind of developed for Sentinels, I thought maybe getting a little complacent, right? Obviously, sometimes having some fun with it, Dapper on split, picked up an Odin, uh, and, and it was a round that ended up getting lost. I think it was the first round that Anbox ended up picking here on this map as we see it close out. But then as we get over to Icebox, there were a couple of times towards that A site where Zoms was hanging out under Heaven, trying to back up Shazam. And I believe there were two rounds specifically where he was just pre-fired and killed. Or right. every time they would toss out the Nano Swarm and try and push him away. And so I was thinking, <laughs> ah, Sentinel's getting a little complacent, right? They're losing rounds because of this. But what happened was it kind of bred complacency in Anbox, where they just felt like every time, maybe not bred complacency, but every time there was that threat of, the Omen's probably in the back of the site, I have to throw a Nano Swarm here. And then in right. that very last round, he wasn't there. The utility was used and it didn't matter. So just when I think one thing about Sentinels, they completely make me eat my words. We see that beautiful spray down. Shazam <laughs> on fire, sick on fire in this series. Everybody really coming online here. And I think if you ask anybody in this scene, who beats uh, a Sentinels that is with everybody online? And I don't know if anybody has a team name for you just because of you know the stuff you're seeing in these replays. It's admirable that it was so close too, because 
you can't help but think of Anbox as the underdogs heading into this. Mm -hmm. And I just absolutely love watching them every single time. Boy is one of my favorite players to watch. The high sense warrior. And I feel like he wasn't <laughs> necessarily the crazy standout player, but man, he was just so much fun to watch. Everybody was so much fun to watch. I mean, again, I just don't want Anbox to like feel bad for themselves for not winning this out against such a difficult team. I can't get over that 3k. Like, what even in the world was that? But, and Bucks, they've only been getting better and better. Now that Poach is able to play consistently, thankfully he has had his health issues worked out. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit of a struggle towards the end of 2020. They're looking better. I'm liking the Viper. Keep in mm -hmm. mind, I mean, you just have to remember how absurd it is that this is basically the only team at this level that regularly runs Viper. There is also yeah. X set, but I think that's pretty much only on split. I have to go through to actually look at the statistics on that. But Ambox is innovating. You know, they made mm. this incredibly difficult. And despite everything I was saying about Sentinels having some more experience in the matchup because of uh, how they played against Viper on, uh, I think it was against SSG in their match previously, they still had a lot of trouble. And Ambox, again, I can't say anything but putting on an amazing show time in time again. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it, I also say don't hang your head, right? This was, again, just for seeding. Obviously, you want to get the highest seed that you can. You want to beat some of the stronger teams here to show that you can. But you get another go at these guys. You get another go at everybody as a whole here. As we've got, uh, it was two maps, quick ones, kind of. It's a nice battle back there in Icebox where Sentinels come out on top, still kind of reigning supreme as a whole, looking like. An incredibly strong team but we're not done on the day we've got four quarterfinals matchups two here two on that mainstream so make sure you guys are checking that one out as well and we guys want to let you know that sometimes some of these plays are just made by uh these players and you have to imagine that they're rocking some of this hyperx here guys hyperx one of the partners for our stream here in this one from champions tour legendary comfort goes wireless with the hyperx cloud 2 wireless built to be an ultra comfortable gaming headset with amazing sound it's no wonder that it's become the preferred gaming headset for millions of gamers. I don't know how many people I've recommended this headset to, how many people uh, that have recommended the headset to me as a whole when it comes to comfort. I think the HyperX Cloud 2 was top notch and now it's wireless. You don't have to worry about those pesky wires getting in the way. I always roll mine over, unfortunately, with my computer chair. So that won't be the case anymore. Uh, so shout outs to HyperX for being a partner here. Now, Ito, we do have to jump away real quick. I want to get maybe last little bit here on Sentinels right. as they're going to hang out now, waiting to see who wins here between Xset and Immortals. What are you? What are you thinking? Their thoughts are. Sheesh. I mean, <laughs> it was a long series for yeah. a two-zero. It felt like that went the limit. And considering how these maps kind of started out as stomps in Sentinels' favors, they had to sweat a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I'm pretty sure right now what Sentinels are going to do, maybe go back, watch the bot a little bit, but they can take it easy. They don't have to play anymore today. And, you know, get some well-deserved rest, both of you guys, because, you know, <laughs> I just absolutely love watching it. I don't know. Sentinels and Anbox always seem to deliver, and this is no exception. That's my final thoughts on it. I think I rehashed almost everything at this point. Keep your heads up. Yep, absolutely. And Sentinels, they have a chance to kind of go back and look at some of that Viper gameplay because they could quite possibly see it again in the semifinals against Xset should they take their match. Now, as I said, guys, we do have to jump to a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to have a best of three series closing out the quarterfinals between Xset and Immortals. We'll catch you guys in just a bit.